Hi, I'm Renee McLaughlin. Thank you so much for coming to my inspiration page. I have been working with women for over 20 years, and in that amount of time, believe me, I've learned a thing or two about how to get long-term success when it comes to your health and your fitness. And I find that when per people first start to come to health and fitness, they think they really need to have some motivation. And motivation, interestingly, comes in two varieties. The first variety, really, instead of motivation, I'm gonna use the word desperation, right? It's when you go to the doctor and the doctor tells you you almost have diabetes or your blood pressure's too high or they put you on that nasty thing called the scale and you're like, oh my God, I had no idea that my weight had creeped up like that. So we're feeling really desperate. We're feeling like we have to get ourselves into action and do something to take care of that. That's desperation. And you know what? Desperation can be okay because it has enough energy to get us into action doing something. But the problem with desperation is, as soon as we start to get a little bit of success, what happens? We automatically just start to kind of back off. Well, I know if I do a little of that, it'll help. So I'll just go and I just won't work out today. Instead, I'll go out with the girls and have some wine. And before you know it, right, you're off of your program. The second variety of motivation is what I call obligation. Here's what happens. You guys know the voice in your head that's shooting on you all the time? Well, you really should get up and do your workout. You really should go to the gym. You really should go eat healthy. Should, should, should. And the thing with shoulds are, you know, they can get you into action a little bit, but there's just not enough energy to take you all the way to where you need to be because you're always feeling bad about it. It's like you really should do that, but ugh, it's like a big punishment. Who the heck wants to do that? And maybe it'll work or maybe it won't. And you can just feel the energy, right? When you're shutting all over yourself, it doesn't have enough energy to take you all the way to where you need to go. So these are the two types of motivation that sound good. They sound like they should work, but they never work long term. So gosh, Renee, then what's really going to do it? Well, here's what I found. I found a different way to help people get there, and that is inspiration. That's why I called this page on my site inspiration. What if? What if you knew that there were just a few things that you could do in your day that will really make a huge difference long term in the way you look and in the way you feel? What if you absolutely knew, you knew with every cell in your body that if you did those, you would have success? Doesn't that feel so much better? It's like, wow, okay, if I really knew I would do that and could get success, of course I would do that. Of course I might get up and do a few T-tap moves in the day. Why not? Why not get up and do a couple set of hoedowns? Maybe I'll just, you know, do three moves every other day if I knew for sure, for sure, that I was going to have a positive result. And that's why I wanted to put this page up. Because inspiration does have the energy to take us all the way to where we need to go. The thing with inspiration, though, is it needs to keep being fed back into us. You know, we can get inspired, and then when life starts to hit us, we need to have another place to go get that inspiration um, junkie fed again, right? And that's, again, why I put this page up. Because what I decided to do was, I thought, you know, if I wanted to be inspired, who am I going to go to? I'm going to go to people who have done inspiring things, who have done, say, the TTAP 60-day challenge and won in their category, and some who have won numerous times. I thought, these people have some tips for us, some way that we can use to help us stay inspired. 
So I went out and started to interview different people who have won in the TTAP 60 day challenge because you guys, I'm telling you, the stories are amazing and how just doing a few of these TTAP moves have made huge differences in people's bodies. One lady in the 2016 60 day challenge, in 60 days, she lost over 40 inches. I'm sorry, but that inspires me, okay? It's amazing. This was the first year that I actually entered the challenge. I've been a TTAP trainer for 17 years, and I coached hundreds of people through their own challenges and winning in the challenges, uh, but I never done it myself for different reasons. Um, I can share that video with you another time, but I did make the decision to do it, and guess what? I actually did lose in that 60 days I lost my 10 pounds of excess toxic menopausal fluff that I had not been able to get off for about a year and a half. Now, I know those of you who have, you know, real weight issues are probably rolling your eyeballs at me, but you know what? It was hard for me as a trainer, etc. I really needed to get strong and clear and honest with myself about why I couldn't lose those. And I shifted a few things and it just takes a few things, you guys, to get amazing results. That's the kind of inspiration that I want to give to you. Here's the thing. This is simple. You can do it. I hope that when you are finding that your inspiration is starting to fall a little bit, come back here, listen to some of these interviews, read the success stories, come to our 60-day challenge Facebook group. Let us inspire each other. It's all about community. Guess what? You can do it. And we're all here to support each other. Thanks. I hope you really enjoy these interviews as much as I enjoy doing them. Have a great, inspired day.